G'day YouTube, welcome to another video. This is just another unboxing video. Well, almost. What self-respecting nerd would be happy just to unbox something electronic and not plug it in and play with it? And I'm certainly a self-respecting nerd, so at the end of the video I'm going to hook this up for battery before I install it and get it running. Other than that, just an unboxing video. Get this one first. Well, this box contains the transducer and it's very nicely packaged. It's certainly a fair chunk of transducer, biggest one I've ever mounted on a boat. This is all the mounting hardware, all the screws you need for the job, and it looks like a bracket to mount it on. I'll leave all that in the box until I'm ready to mount it. And now we come to the main feature, and that is unboxing the Raymarine Axiom Pro. And right on top there's the Navionics card with all the maps for Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, I'm guessing that's a cutout template and or gasket if you're mounting it in a dash. And unfortunately the baseboard model that I have has much too small a dash for me to mount it in there because that would be my preferred mounting position. We have a book of words telling us all about the unit, I hope. And we have a thank you note from the general manager of Raymarine. Now I'm not real big on reading manuals at the best of times, but this is one manual that I think I will read cover to cover. The unit itself may be very intuitive to use, but to get the best out of anything like this, you really need to know how to tweak it, and I'm hoping the manual is going to give me some insights into that. Now those cardboard tags on the tray were lifting it out, I didn't realise that. And last of all, we've got a bracket for mounting it, and man, that is one decent chunk of bracket. Now these look like the two pieces that clip on the side to cover up the screws when you mount the unit on a panel. That's if you're fortunate enough to have a bait with a large enough panel to mount this unit on a panel, which I don't. Got knobs for putting it onto the bracket. I've got an unmarked table here, so I don't know what it's for, but looking at the manual and by process of elimination, it would appear to be a sea talking to device net cable. Now what that's used for I don't know, but I will endeavour to find out in case I need it. We have a Raynet cable, which is the Raymarine network. We've got all the hardware here that we need to mount it. There's some buttons that go in the top right corner of the unit and they're left off, I understand, to mount it in the dashboard and we won't be doing that, but I can put them on any time. This is a power cable and there's a whole heap of other wires there along with it. It totally confused me. I had to look at the manual to figure out what they were and it turns out they are the Namiya 0183 cables and a video cable by the looks of it. Not sure why we would not have a plug on the end of these Namiya cables. This is the one thing I don't like about it. Having cables that aren't properly closed off or encased in a plug just doesn't sit right with me. It's the only thing I can fault with the entire unit. And that brings us to the main unit itself. It comes with a nice cover for protecting it from the elements and that should always be used when the unit is not in use. Those buttons I showed earlier go up in this corner here. I'm just going to take the transducer down to the bait quickly and have a look where that's going to be mounted just to make sure it's going to fit where I had in mind. Well, it's a huge unit and mounting it isn't quite the easy job I might have hoped it would be. I don't want to be too close to the engine. I've got a planing straight here, a reverse chine up there and a transom strap in the road. So that's limiting my choices quite substantially. Get the ladder. My wife just pointed out we have a fold down ladder on the transom which I've also got to avoid so that limits my choices even more. In fact mounting it just here is about the only option that I have left. Now I'm going to mount it on the left hand side. Uh, I know most people say mount them on the right hand side because of propeller turbulence but I reckon all that's behind the bait. I don't think it's going to make any difference whether you're on the left or the right hand side of the bait ahead of the propeller. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is, I'm backing that thought, mounting it on the left hand side. Quite apart from any other reason, there's already a transducer on the right hand side and I don't want to move that. 
Now since I'm not able to mount this in the dashboard, I can put the buttons in and the side plates on now, cover up those screw holes that won't be used. I found it a little bit more difficult than I had thought it would be. It seemed a pretty simple operation. I put the buttons on, put that side plate on, went and put the other side plate on and that worked fine. Came and looked at the buttons and they weren't quite sitting right. So I had to take the side cover off again, take the buttons off. And I fiddled with the buttons quite a few times before I actually got them to sit in there correctly. It's certainly not impossible or even all that hard, but I did find it a little bit fiddly. But once they were in, they sat quite nicely and side plate went off. Well, here it is starting up for the very first time. Now, I wanted to start it up and get the updates installed and the Navionic charts downloaded and installed. Ah, who am I kidding? I wanted to start it up and play with it. Doing the updates and getting the charts installed was just the use I used. I didn't bother with any of the demo modes because that's basically the perfect situation that the manufacturer wants you to see. I'll wait till I get it on the water before I play with it and see just how it performs. However, I really did want to get the updates installed and the Navionics charts on there, so that's what I went ahead and did after I'd had a nice little play with the interface and a good look around. I did spend considerable time looking around trying to figure out how to set up the Wi-Fi interface on the unit, only to eventually find that there is no way to set up the Wi-Fi interface on the unit that is user accessible as somewhere you go for setting Wi-Fi settings. What you need to do is just start an upgrade and then it will take you to a screen that allows you to set up your Wi-Fi settings for doing the upgrade. I suppose it's easy for non-computer literate people, but when you're used to dealing with computers all the time, it was a bit confusing. I really expected that it would be like a computer or a smartphone even, where you'd have a Wi-Fi settings screen that you could actually get to from the settings menu. That's not a complaint, it's just an observation. I guess they've done it that way for non-computer literate people. Although with smartphones that are around these days, I don't think there's too many people using electronics that are fairly computer literate. And my Wi-Fi network at home is protected in that only known machines can connect to it. And the way that works is that every machine in the world has a MAC address. Different from an IP address, this is a machine address. And it's unique to every machine in the world. Only machines where my routers know the MAC address are allowed to connect. Fairly simple idea, universally used for many, many years. I looked for the MAC address on the Raymarine unit. Uh, every smartphone in the settings, you can look up the MAC address. Every computer, you can get the MAC address. Every piece of electronics I've ever used that has networking, you can look up the MAC address somehow, except on the Raymarine unit. Again, I guess it's intended for people that are computer literate, but it was a bit of a pain. I had to download a MAC address snipper onto my uh, smartphone and snip the MAC address of the Raymarine so that I could enter it into my routers and allow it to connect. It's not that difficult to do, but it took me a while to figure out that that was the only way to do it. Anyway, that's the end of it. I got it running, had a nice play with it, got the updates installed, got the maps installed. She's all ready to go into the boat and find me some fish. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do plan to do a video on installing this unit. I've actually got some of the footage together for it, or most of the footage together for it now, but I haven't had time to put it together into a video yet and I'm getting a bit excited about using it, so I really expect that I'm going to get out in the water to use it and upload a video of it in use before I actually do the install video. But as I said, I got most of the footage for it, so the installation video will get uploaded eventually. If you'd like to make sure you don't miss it, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notify button so that you're notified when a video goes up. Until next time, good fishing.